Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at an Echo PAS 266. Uh, the customer complaint is that it won't start. Let's take a closer look in here and see what there is to find. That air filter looks really wet. And what do we have? Water. It's just full of water. It certainly wouldn't start like that, would it? But when I have that much water in an air filter, I suspect there's water in the engine itself. We'll take a look in a fuel tank and see if there's any water in there. Yeah, that did not sound good. We'll pull the exhaust apart and see if there's any water in there. One screw will pull this heat shield off from in front of the muffler. Sure, there's only one screw, but it's clipped on there pretty good. Give it a yank. There you go, pry on it with a scrunch. Alright, at first glance everything looks pretty normal. We're going to put a little lube on the threads of these exhaust bolts because um, they looked really dry. And I've been burnt in the past trying to back nuts off of these exhaust studs and uh, stripping them. So let's, uh, I hope I sped this up a little bit because this is kind of a yawn fest, ain't it? Get that plate off of there, he. Alright, this muffler's got a cat in it, and that I'm sure is full of water. Gotta be careful doing this. If there's that much water in the engine, and you can see it just running out of there, uh, water on top of the piston, it's not gonna compress. So don't use all your force to pull the engine over because there's a fair chance you could bend a connecting rod or, well, I don't know, I guess that's probably the worst thing you could do is bend a connecting rod. So we're going to take a look in from the other side, pull the carburetor out of the way. There's water sitting in the intake. The problem I'm going to have is that um, I thought I had some isopropyl alcohol and I was going to pour it right into the engine and just roll the engine over and try and absorb as much moisture as I could. But uh, it turns out I was all out of that. and. When I dug in the toolbox to see what I did have, you know, the only thing I came up with was sea foam. And I don't think sea foam absorbs water. Wow, look at all that water coming out of there. So, I guess uh, I could have edited this out of the footage, dumping sea foam in here. And uh, what I really like to do is just uh, change the label on that can to isopropyl alcohol. Because that's what I would normally do is run some alcohol through the engine and try and suck up as much, as much moisture as I could. But instead we're going to... Uh, 
we're just gonna keep rolling this thing over and trying to get as much liquid out of the engine as we can. Uh, there's maybe a quarter of a can here yet. Yeah, it's a mess. You'll want to make sure that you have the stop switch engaged when you're doing this. It's just good practice, let's say that. Alright, it seems like the bulk of the water is coming out of here. Yuck! Double yuck! You know, when I do these kind of repairs, I tell the customer there are no guarantees. I let them know what I found, what I did, but I don't know how long it sat with water in the engine. I don't know what the crank bearings look like. Um, if I spend a half an hour of labor working on this thing and get it running, that's um, a lot cheaper than just saying, well, I gotta replace it. Or I'm gonna tear it all down and put new bearings in it. You know, this thing could run, it could have a, a long life after this. Or it could have a real short one. We just don't know. But I think it's a gamble worth taking to just dry it out and run your standard premix through it and take your chances. So we blew some air through it while we pulled it over, hoping to get some more moisture, but I think in the end, as long as we got enough moisture out to safely crank it over without worrying about liquid on top of the piston, and get this thing fired up, I mean it's going to dry out as it's running. And it's really the best we can hope for, I think. Put a new spark plug in it, putting our muffler back on. And our uh, muffler heat shield. We're gonna give this thing a try, see if she runs. And if it does, we'll, we'll probably run about a tank of gas through it make sure it's going to run at least that long and dry out. So that's all I got for you on the Echo PAS 266 waterlogged engine. Thanks for watching. Later. Wow, that sounds bad. <laughs>